elusive aurora. You've heard of it, right? The, the big, beautiful lights in the sky. Did you know, though, that they're caused by a space weather storm? That at the same time as creating that aurora may wreak havoc on your GPS, your phone reception. They can even cause power blackouts. Now, people travel from all around the world to see these amazing lights, and you understand why. They're stunning to look at. The aurora in the north is the aurora borealis, and the aurora australis is in the south. Auroras form when solar storms that move at speeds of up to 2,000 kilometers per second interact with the Earth's magnetic field, causing charged particles to spiral to the north and south poles. Those particles collide with gas molecules that absorb the energy and then emit it as visible light. It's a process called fluorescence. The colours we normally get to see in the auroras are reds and greens, they come from oxygen atoms, and blues and purples, they come from nitrogen atoms. Space weather storms can even have an impact on the Earth's magnetic field and the ionosphere. A solar or space weather storm has a number of different impacts and they arrive on Earth at different times throughout the storm. They don't just create auroras, they can have an impact on electronics and electromagnetic signals. Like the interference can black out HF radio signals and they can make GPS inaccurate. They can even fry the circuits on satellites. Just take a look around you, we rely on this stuff every single day of our lives. I, mean, I would literally be stopped in my tracks without Google Maps. And it's not just me. Think of the pigeons. The Earth's magnetic field could get bent by one of these storms and they use that to help them navigate and figure out where they're going. Have you ever seen a pigeon stop and ask for directions? It ain't pretty. Let me give you a bit of an idea. A massive solar storm hit in 1859. It's called the Carrington Event. On that day, before sunrise, the sky erupted. Red, blue, purple auroras so bright they lit up the entire planet. And the storm caused massive electrical current so the telegraph machines kept working even after they were unplugged. And we're talking about the largely pre-electrical 1800s here. There's no phones, we're pre-internet, we're pre-app that can do literally anything I've ever wanted. What if something like that happened today? It would be catastrophic. If a solar storm damages the power network, that means no power. No power means no phones, no internet, no running water. It means I wouldn't be able to do my job forecasting the weather. How long do you reckon you could go without your phone? Because some studies suggest it might take as long as two years to fix. Some extreme studies say as much as 10 years. In North America alone, the economic cost of the loss of electricity could run to one to two trillion dollars. That's just in the first year. It's not just us on Earth we have to think about. If you're in space, things could be even worse. And the pigeons. Why won't someone think of the pigeons? Luckily, the Bureau of Meteorology keeps an eye on these space storms, but there's no way of actually knowing when the next one might be. They say we might have less than a day to prepare if another Carrington event were to happen. And we've had a few close calls. In 2005, there was a space weather storm that took out satellite communications and GPS signals for about 10 minutes. The awesome power of these magnetic storms that can create auroras in our atmosphere has inspired and intrigued people from all around the world. In Australia, Aboriginal people from across the continent have incorporated the aurora into their stories. Like the Gunai people of Eastern Victoria, they believe that auroras are bushfires in the spirit world and that they're an omen of a coming catastrophe, which isn't too far from what we'd experience if we did get another big one. So learn how to read maps, people, because you ain't going to be able to Google it.